today, Wednesday, November the 18th, along with the anniversaries of the dedications of the churches of Peter and Paul, we celebrate the feast day of Rose Filippini Duchesne, who is included in the grand mural above the main entrance of our St. Matthew's Cathedral. Why? She too is a saintly personage of our faith in the Americas. Rose Filippini was one of several French men and women who were important missionaries in the early history of the United States. She was an educator who was a prominent early member of the Congregation of the Religious of the Sacred Heart, now the Society of the Sacred Heart. She spent the last half of her life teaching and serving the people of the early Midwestern United States, then the western frontier of the nation. She established the first Sacred Heart Convent in the United States at St. Charles, Missouri in 1818. Subsequently, she founded many schools and orphanages. Rose Filippini was born in Grenoble in 1769 in what was then the Kingdom of France. In 1788, she entered a visitation of Holy Mary convent, but four years later it was shut down during the French Revolution reign of terror. The nuns were dispersed and she re returned to the family country home, attempting to continue living the order's rule of life and serving family and those suffering from the reign of terror. Under Napoleon, the church again was able to operate openly. Thus, in 1801, she sought to reestablish the convent, then in shambles, but now she was the mother superior, but with only three companion sisters. Meanwhile, in northern France, Madeleine Sophie Barrett had founded the Society of the Sacred Heart, whose members were long known as the, quote, Madams of the Sacred Heart, unquote. Why? From their use of that term, due to the hostility to religious communities which lingered in post-revolutionary France. In 1804, Madeleine Sophie Barrett went south to Grenoble to establish a new foundation branch and there got Rose to merge with the Sacred Heart Order. It made a lot of sense for both orders, and now it continued its mission to educate young women without being an enclosed religious order. Then, in 1815, Duchesne followed Barrett's instruction and opened a convent and school in Paris. Since childhood, Rose Filippini had desired to serve the Native Americans in Louisiana, then the broad territory known as New France. The bishop came to Paris and convinced her to get permission to evangelize the Indian and French children of his broad diocese. So in 1818, she came to New Orleans with four other sisters. However, finding no housing there, the Pioneer Sisters went up the Mississippi and decided to begin in the settlement at St. Charles in what was then Missouri Territory. Why? Well, the United States had made the Louisiana Purchase from France 15 years earlier and settlers were beginning to stream in now from the east. 
She later described it as the remotest village in the United States. The sisters established a convent there in a log cabin and in the area established the first free school west of the Mississippi. Poverty and Christian heroism are here, she wrote, and trials are the riches of priests in this land. Foundations in Louisiana followed, sometimes to the south, with the enslaved labor in that area, which the order since has sought to atone for. In 1826, Pope Leo XII approved the Society of the Sacred Heart. By 1828, six communities and several schools had been established in the United States with many struggles in the process. Then in 1841, the Jesuits asked them to join in a new mission with the Potawatomi tribe in eastern Kansas. She agreed, insisting on joining the effort, and at 71 became determined to continue on and help Native Americans as far west as the Rocky Mountains. However, a year later, in 1842, now 72 years old, after a year among the Potawatomi, her health could not sustain it, and she returned to St. Charles. There she would spend the last decade of her life living in a tiny room, feeble, but determined to assist the order's efforts with the Native Americans with her prayers. Thus Rose Filippini's ministry to the Potawatomi tribe, earlier on located at Sugar Creek in Kansas, won for her the name, quote, woman who prays always, unquote. At age 83, she died on this date, November the 18th, in 1852, and was buried in the chapel at the convent at St. Charles, but that has since become a larger shrine. She was beatified in 1940 and canonized by Pope John Paul II on July the 3rd, 1988. Rose Filippini is a patron saint of perseverance amid adversity, certainly one whose intercession continues to be needed, especially at this time for several of the Native American reservations, as well as our own Catholic schools. Here in the Washington Archdiocese, her sisters have Stone Ridge School of the Sacred Heart in Bethesda. St. Rose Filippini, pray for us.